Hello and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4 Beginner's Guide Tutorial. Here we are with part six. Let's go ahead and make a start. This is actually my uh, second attempt at trying to record this because of unforeseen interruptions, which is uh, never great when you're trying to record, right? Okay, so let's get back on the boil. So load up the save game that you did at the end of part five. Or if you're just watching, well, just watch. Nice to have you with us. Or if you are doing these in quick fashion, just continue on where we left off. Okay, so we're on 5th of April, 1936. We've got almost all of our divisions training with the exception of Rommel. And the reason was he has panzers. And we do not really have loads of fuel spare in order to justify the training. Now, we're going to come over to the F3 menu, which is air. And it's something we've not yet looked at beyond moving them all to Berlin. But if you recall me saying we, it would be ideal if we got some of these training, which it absolutely is. So if we click on the air base, we've got all of these uh, air wings all based at Brandenburg and we need some of them training and the reason is because war's going to kick or the civil war is going to kick off in Spain before long and it would be really nice if we could help out to gain some additional air experience. Now I pointed this out last time and it's still an issue we have if you take a look up here we've got all of these different air wings and next to one of the fighters we've actually got a fighter ace and it is Eric Hartman. Now, those of you that know your history, or at least interested in the highest scoring ace of all time, this guy shot down 352 confirmed kills. He didn't join the Luftwaffe until into 1942. Or he may have joined in back end of 41, I can't quite remember, but he certainly didn't reach the front line until 1942 where he was able to start, and even then it took him a while before he even got his first kit. It was actually a terrible pilot in the early stages, which is interesting. But in any case, he certainly was not around in 1936. In fact, in 1936, he will have been about, uh, about 10, 11 years old, something like that. It was certainly not a fighter race. But in any case, the game says otherwise, and that's okay. And the fighter race, if we take a look at the stats, means not only for him or not only for his plane but the entire air wing in other words all 100 fighters that he commands basically gain an additional eight percent maximum airspeed so if fighters can fly faster the way that this game treats how fast something moves is it means they are harder to hit. So the faster something flies through the sky, the harder it is for the enemy to hit it, so the less likely it is to receive damage. The same goes, by the way, for Navy. Now, when it comes to air attack, that's obvious. How much damage are we able to put out? And agility is, you know, how maneuverable something is. Now, it's not that we get to see dogfights, although you get to see the little figurine animations. But obviously, in real life, if you're more manoeuvrable, you are better able to, again, get in a better position during a dogfight to, to get the kill. Don't ask me how having a good uh, pilot fighter ace translates into the rest of the air wing being better, but I guess it's, well, he's just able to pass his tactics around. Uh, so... When it comes to, well, should we have this fighter wing training or this one? Well, ideally both, but because we're somewhat short on fuel, we definitely want the fighter wing with the uh, fighter race. So what I'm going to do is just with this guy selected, and again, if I just press escape, if we select on the airbase, it's going to select all of the, all of the aircraft, uh, all of the air wings at the airbase. We certainly do not have the fuel to train them all. At least not yet. So I'm going to select just the fighter wing with Hartman. And again, this little icon on the plane here is a fighter. And you can see that obviously varies, say, from this, which is uh, a tactical bomber. Uh, this one here and so on. So, uh, this one here being a torpedo bomber and so forth. So with just this one selected, we're going to train. And I find most useful is to get either a second squadron of fighters over there, but or we can get one squadron of fighters, i.e. Hartman, and one squadron of bombers. Now your choice is really between the uh, heavier tactical bomber or your smaller uh, close air support or Stuka type bombers. 
I prefer the tactical bomber. You're just going to get a little bit more out of it. Uh, if we take a look, let's have a look. Ground attack 5.4. Let's actually confirm if this is the case. Close air support ground attack 8. Okay, take that back. Uh, <laughs> it's, you learn so every day. And, and the reason is if you've got DLC... Uh, for the aircraft designer, you're actually able to tinker with the design of the aircraft and certainly the larger aircraft put out more damage with the DLC. So, minor mistake there on my part. Uh, happy to hold my hand up and admit it. So, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to trade these Stukas uh, instead of the large ones. So, let's set those two wings trained. So, we've got the fighters and the Stukas. Now, again, we've got this same thing going on here. We've got the rookie or level one. They're slowly going to get to training up to level two. Then they're slowly going to train up to level three. And like everything else, once it's level three, it goes no further, no matter how long they train for. The only way for them to get higher is to go fight. If we take a look now, even though we're still paused here over northern Germany, we've got uh, air wings here of fighters. And they're basically going up round doing their training. That's what this little figurine is. It doesn't mean where those planes are. Oh, well, the planes are exactly here and they're not over here or they're here and they're not here. Don't think of it like that. Just think of it as the vague area where we see these planes flying around is vaguely where they are. Anywhere within this circle, as it happens, this, uh, this dotted yellow circle, they're just going to fly around and do their training. So we're going to press escape and we're going to let that carry on. We're going to press F2, because if you recall, we add our Navy guy training. And we're going to select on one of these. Now, take a look up there, that top one. See, we've only got two out of ten. Well, hang on, we had nine out of ten before. So what's going on there? So let's press select and have a look. Now, again, this may or may not be different on, on your save game. Because, again, there's always a degree of randomness involved when it comes to damage. But here we see what's going on. We've got two subs that are still out in the sea training, but actually there's a lot of them that have become damaged and they're repairing. So be very careful not to mess up what you do here. So if you do see some damage, I'll tell you what, best yet, just watch what I'm doing. Don't click here. Uh, so I'm going to see what exactly is going on here. So I'm going to click on this group here. So not the top two, but the top. And it's going to take me to the detached group of subs and it actually detached seven of them all at once and you can see here uh three of them are almost if not ready to go but there's another four that are very uh nearly repaired you see they're 92 percent 97 percent whatever once these have let's slow down time let's go slowest i'm going to unpause so we're 5th of april so let's unpause on the slowest speed and watch what's happening to the repair percentage. 92, 93. And this is on the slowest rate. Uh, so on. So you can see these 90 odd percent. They're almost done. They're done. They're done. Now let's press plus a little bit just to speed this up. Boom. Pause. Now they've gone back to reinforce the original group as in, and look at that, without actually pressing anything other than pause, these subs are all back together again and now all nine of them are training. And again, ideally we wish we had the tenth sub out here, we don't yet. If we come over to the production menu, let's have a little look scrolling down. You can see actually of the four destroyers we had on the menu, two of them uh, have completed there's another two of them to be made and once again we're still suffering with this slight shortage on steel uh, deficit overall of nine pieces of steel which is again going to hold everything or slow everything up and, and you can see here these destroyers suffering from that uh, production continues but at a reduced speed okay so back to the actually just before we do take a look over here so we've got our two admirals we've got this guy over here who's got the surface ships we've got this guy over here who's got the u-boats but over on the right here see there's a number one these are ships that are called reserve ships or reserve fleet so here we've got a heavy cruiser so what's this all about this was the cruiser, if we come to our production menu, an episode or two ago, we had set this cruiser. It was like 99% complete or something like that. And it's actually finished. 
Now, because it's a heavy cruiser, it's not a sub and it's not a destroyer. It's a heavy cruiser. No flotilla was actually requiring this. If you remember, the only thing we were waiting for was for destroyers to complete. Uh, the Admiral over here is actually still waiting for a couple of subs. So if we come over to our uh, surface fleet, and remember it's a heavy cruiser that we've got available. So there's a heavy cruiser sat over here that's basically ready to go. Deutschland class. So I'm going to come over here. Now if we take a look at our two flotillas, the top one and the second one, one of these has got just, uh, one of them has got battleships, one has got heavy cruisers. How do we know? Well, let's press. We'll select the second one down. This one happens to have battleships. It says it there. Another way to look at it is to open the composition menu and we can see that this entire flotilla is comprised of the following. Battleships, light cruisers, destroyers. Okay. Now we could potentially put the heavy cruiser in with this flotilla, but I actually want to keep the heavy cruisers in one flotilla and the battleships in another flotilla okay so what i'm going to do is just cancel out this one again press escape press escape press escape come back to the surface fleet and i'm going to select the top one what they call the hoch zeer flotte i guess so let's select that here we see we've got the heavy cruisers uh, as well as uh, various other ships further down so again open the task force composition editor Heavy cruiser, uh, we see there we've got, uh, we've authorized there to be two in this flotilla, there's two available. So I'm going to hit on the plus, authorize there to be three, and when we unpause the game, this spare cruiser that sat at, uh, at base, at some dockyard somewhere, will then come out and reinforce this flotilla, because it's ready to go. So I hit OK, and again, now you can see, there's uh, above me there, there are three authorized, there are two already there. And if we slow time down, unpause. Now we can see we've got three out of three, four out of four for the light cruisers, six out of eight for the destroyers. So I'm happy with that. Because we are short of two subs here, I just want to get those two subs squared away or it's going to bug me. So what I'm going to do, and again, follow along, let's pause, we're on the 6th of April. We'll come to our production menu, and like I always say, if you're a few days ahead or behind, when it comes to the date, it doesn't matter. If you start to become a month or two behind, that's where the problems will begin. Um, so what we're going to do is, if we scroll down to the to the uh, ship section, we see we've got a, a and I realise I'm somewhat in the way for some of these, so just briefly, uh, we've got a couple of battleships under construction there, they're the lowest priority, and above that we've got a destroy, and you see we've currently got, uh, or we've still got, should I say, 10 dockyards available, and they're actually all working to produce destroyers. So what I'm going to do is come over here to build ship, the option, and we're going to say, right, we want a couple of subs. Now, all the ships, uh, let's bring myself back on there. All the ships you see available over there. But if we select here to show only submarines, we're going to only see subs. Now, at the moment, there's only one type of sub available to us. But sometimes you will have several. So, for example, if we come over to the Heavy Cruiser tab, we can see that there are two cruisers that are currently available to us. If we come over to the light, oh, there's only one. Now, the reason it says the number three is because if we show outdated equipment, there's actually three outdated cruisers. Now, potentially, we could build an old cruiser if we wanted, but I don't see the point. You may as well always build the best of what you uh, can. Uh, so, coming over to subs... And remember, we're just too short to fulfill the requirements that we currently have. So I'm going to click on this. And again, it goes into the bottom of the list. So it's actually behind, uh, just behind me at the minute. I want to push this sub up because, again, it's a higher priority to me that I get these two subs done. And again, to build a submarine is much quicker and cheaper than it is to build an entire battleship. Certainly when we're talking World War II subs, when it comes to the more modern Nuclear type subs, I have no idea <laughs> how difficult or not that is. So I'm going to move the sub to the top of the list. 
And in order to get these done, as you see, they're set to infinite. So again, it's going to build one, then build one and build one, carry on churning them out. We only want two, so I'm going to hit the plus, plus. And again, when it comes to how many dockyards do we want working on it, I'm actually going to set, uh, let's go for eight dockyards to make it really nice and quick. And again, because they're all being used, they're all currently working on this destroyer. Actually, none of those dockyards are available uh, to work on the sub. Now, an easy, quick way to sort this is to say, right, well, let's actually set the number of people working on the destroyer down to just two. All of those dockyards that were previously working on this, or all eight of them, are now working on that sub. As you can see, that's now happy. Now, you may say, oh, well, when the sub's done, those dockyards are going to become available again. Yes, they are. And at that point, they can carry on working on the destroyer. So what we'll do is we'll fulfill the destroyer up to 10 dockyards. You can currently see there are two out of 10. So now hopefully it's going to make sense that once these subs have finished, the eight dockyards working on them will then cascade down and once again fulfill the destroyers. Once those two have completed, all of the dockyards will cascade down and assist building or finishing off these battleships. So I'm now happy with that, so let's press escape to come out of that. Uh, once again, let's have a quick look at these subs here. And again, I'm going to leave these training until this silver bar uh, appears. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to micromanage it on a day-by-day -day basis. So what you want to do is, as you're playing at high speed, just every two or three weeks or as and when you sort of think about it, oh yeah, I had those guys training, just come back and again, F1... F2, F3. Okay, let's escape. Let's come back to F1. And we're going to unpause. Still got this uh, issue with the resources, although it's not as bad as it was. If we take a look on the construction page, hey, have a look at this. We've actually finished our first two uh, civilian factories. We've got one left at Ryland that we're working on. We've also got this road network at Moorsland we're working on. Uh, so nice to see things are progressing there. Once these tax tasks have been completed and we'll find ourselves having spare, uh, once again, we'll have ourselves spare civilian factories, we will get notifications. So we don't need to think all, all the civilian factories being used. We will be informed about that as and when they become available. So let's hit escape. Let's press plus. And again... We're just going to pause every time that dialogue comes up. And sometimes you may get a dialogue that I don't to say, or somebody has been injured, or, or, or something might be a few days either side. Don't worry about it, okay? Overall, the game will go exactly the same. So let's unpause. And we'll try to get uh, to the same date, uh, if I remember to do so at the end of this. Okay, let's pause. So there we saw not necessarily an entire pop-up, but we heard that little noise, and that's because Modify Officer Core. Now we've been over this, we're able to assign a theorist because we've got over a hundred political power, but as we saw in previous episode, not necessarily the best or the most useful. So let's ignore that notification, but nice to see that it was working. On pause. made a bit of a pause as that every pause it's a bit of a pause there as the whole month sinks up so here we are then 5th of may and again give or take somewhat and we've got that technology there unlocked now i believe this was the 1918 weapons technology so i guess if you press details there we see indeed it was the mg08 and leichterminenwerfer i guess that's like a grenade thrower but Again, don't quote me. Um, we've now got that unlocked. Great. And because it's unlocked, obviously... Oh, we've actually got a second piece of technology unlocked as well, the basic machine tool. So we've actually got two things. we got this technology unlocked, and we got this technology unlocked at the same time. Great. So if we come over to the research slot, we've got two slots available, and again, we're going to make use of these. So coming over to the first one, I highly recommend, if we're coming over to the engineering panel, because we are going to make use of, I keep saying it, that civil war, and it, it's going to be coming along before you know it. 
we require, I say require, but uh, yeah, we require the radio. You know, if you've got tanks and they're going at it and they don't have a radio to communicate, it's going to be very difficult to coordinate what goes on. And if you take a look at that, one of the bonuses we get is coordination. We also get a reinforce rate bonus of 5%. And that's very obvious, right? Hey, we're in a bit of a pickle here. We're getting outnumbered. We need reinforcements over here. We need them now. Bang! <laughs> that's my little uh, impression there of the film. If you don't have a radio, you can't do that. The best thing that you can hope to do is pull up a little... A uh, thing where on the top of your tank, this little uh, signpost sticks out the top and you hope that somebody in the distance is able to see that little signpost and says, oh, that means they need this. Uh, and that was, you know, how things were done ways back in the day. So let's go ahead, get that radio unlocked. And you see 136 days. OK, last but not least, then we've got this one down here. Let's get that one on the boil. Now, coming back over to the industrial tab, and again, remember, we're trying to expand industrially first, militarily second. We have this choice here between concentrated industry or, I think they call it dispersed. Yes, they do, dispersed industry. So, that it's again, it's a choice. This one or this one. And I've been over this before, but what I like to point out here. The concentrated industry one, if you take a look at that, the big difference there is factory output plus 15. It's plus 15, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15. So at the end of all of these years, the same set of factories are going to put out a lot more stuff. Now, if we come over to the dispersed industry tab, factory output plus 10, which is still an increase, but not quite as much. Excuse me. But we do get a bunch of other bonuses instead, not least uh, uh, factory bomb vulnerability. Yeah, you space things out a bit more. When that bomb comes down, it's going to be less likely to cause uh, too much damage because everything is more spaced out. That, I find, are the two uh, biggest bonuses, but there are also a few more. Again, if you wish to pause or look at it yourself, by all means. But certainly playing as Germany, in my opinion, dispersed industry is the way, is the way to go. If you're playing as United States of America for the same reason, I recommend you switch to concentrated because you are very unlikely to become bombed playing as the US. So let's go for dispersed industry. OK. Bang. There are other advantages to have there, which we will take a look at uh, soon. Not least if we come over to the construction menu See, when we zoom in, let's say civilian factories, uh, let's take uh, Hessen. See, we can have up to eight factories on Hessen. We've currently got four. Once we've completed the dispersed industry research, we will actually be able to get uh, an additional factory or two within Hessen. And again, for every level that we go down, we'll be able to get more and more factories in the same state. So again, let's hit escape. And with full speed ahead, we can already see we've got 141 political power. So when I unpause, it's going to be very quickly until we get that uh, extra additional political power. Remember, we need 150 to make a, a, a big change to what's going on, which we require. So let's unpause. Pause, and there we go. We've got 150 or 155. So let's go ahead and modify the government. We can see we've almost completed our four-year plan, so that's good. But uh, in the absence of that being completed, let's have a look at something else we can do down here. Now, one thing that I find really important in this game, and we've touched on it already, is that we get army experience, navy, as well as air experience. There is no quicker way to get this experience absent of war itself than by hiring a chief of the army, chief of the navy, and chief of the air force. Um, other th so that's something that we would like to get in uh, relatively soon. Um, another thing that's really important are these two options here. The industrial concern, and by important, all of these are important, but I'm talking early on. 
we've got industrial concern and military uh, military design. And if we just take a look at industrial concern, we've got these three companies to choose from. And if we just hover over, for instance, IG Farben, if we hire or, or, or set this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. Let's just say we just hire IG Farben as our advisor. We're going to gain an additional industrial research speed of 5% for the rest of the game. We'll also get synthetic resources research speed plus 15 for the rest of the game. So I think that's hugely important. Now you've got Krupp over here. Now that focuses purely on industrial speed, but we get 15% as opposed to 5. Although on IG Fiber we get a little bit of both. The other option is we've got Siemens, uh, which will give us a 15% bonus on electronics. So, which is your radios, your radars, that kind of stuff. Now, I think IG Farben is a really good all-rounder to go for here. There's probably few people that are going to disagree with that. We definitely need research on industry. We definitely need research on synthetics to get a little bit of a bonus in both in my opinion, is the way to go. So let's get IG Farben in. And if we come over here, let's just see if we can verify this. Uh, so see this option here for 1937, uh, still slightly ahead of time, fuel refining two. It's going to take 319 days to complete if we was to research that now. 319 Let's see if we can remember that. Let's come over to Industrial Concern. Let's hire IG Farben guy. Okay, so we've now hired that advisor. So let's now come back over to our research page. 283 days. That was previously 319. So hopefully you can see there the point of having... Uh, the industry uh, type that you want in position. And again, some of these construction uh, times have been enhanced as, as well, as opposed to uh, Siemens would have made this whole page uh, somewhat quicker. Okay, so that's that one there. I'm happy with that. And while we're thinking about it, let's come over to the F2. Let's have a little look how our U-boat guy... Look at that. The second flotilla's got the 10 subs it needs. So one of those uh, submarines that we asked the dockyards to produce has already been done. And again, if we select on it here, hey, look at this. They're almost completely full. I am not going to leave the entire flotilla training just so this last sub can get fully vetted up. I'm not going to. I'm going to wait. I'm going to forget about these last two. I'm going to wait, and, which is just going to be a couple of days for, every, for all the rest of them. So if we slow time down, let's just say to level three, let's unpause. And this is just literally going to be like a day or so away. There we see them all change. We've just got this one here. I'm going to wait for that one. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. There we go. All right, let's pause. I now think that this entire flotilla is going to be okay to handle itself. And again, if we hover over the silver icon, we can see naval damage is going to be an additional 9.9%, defense 6.6, .6, as opposed to the untrained, uh, the trained guy, which has no benefit, and the novice untrained guy, which has 10% negative effects across the board. So... If we're now going into war, which, you know, at some point we're going to be, you can clearly see that the same sub with the same crew, the same number of people, the same technology is going to inflict roughly 20% more damage overall. Yeah, to have 10% negative damage versus 9.9% more damage, you're talking 20% pretty much. So that's good. Let's come over to the other flotilla. Now, again, you can just click here. So let me just, let me just make this point clear. If we select Dernitz here, the Admiral, he's got two flotillas. And you see them here on the left-hand side. Fl uh, the, this flotilla and this flotilla. Now, these are the same as this here. You've got two flotillas. So if we select the first flotilla, the top flotilla, that's this left one here. Now, if we want to go to the second flotilla, we can press back and select this one here. But the quicker way is to just go back and forth between them like this. It's the same thing, just a different way of doing it. 
Now again, the second flotilla here, they're trained up as much as I want, so I'm going to tell them to stop training. So let's tell them to stop. There we go. Perfect. Now the first flotilla, as we see, for whatever reason, they're still a ways off having completed their training, but once again, I want them to train up to that same standard. So I'm going to just increase the speed to red line level. I'm going to press spacebar. And absent of there being nothing else, actually there is, as you see up there, we've got uh, a couple of things to deal with, but these are so close, we'll just let this finish. And again, this is a less than perfect uh, playthrough, but you can see there we're very close. So let's unpause and pause. That's going to be close enough for me. We've got various things that we need to deal with now. So I'm going to tell this guy, okay, this flotilla, stop training. Perfect. Okay, let's press escape. Uh, let's press escape. Let's press escape. We had that notification, first of all, that the national focus had complete. So the four-year plan is completed, which grants us these bonuses. So let's carry on. And again, there's probably not going to be too many people that you find out there that say the next way to go is auto key or outer key or whatever it says. 70 days to do. Once again, a whole bunch of bonuses down there. Probably the most useful aside from, again, the 10% additional construction speed. Again, these things stack, so very helpful. Are the two times 100% research bonuses for excavation. So when it comes to digging uh, resources out the grounds, we'll be able to research those things a whole lot quicker with a 100% research bonus. I do find it kind of weird that 100, to me, 100% means the entire thing is free. Like, you know, if I say, oh, this thing is 100%, that's like all of it. The 100% research bonus in this game actually means that it's basically half price. <laughs> so why they don't say 50% bonus, I don't know. Uh, so if somebody would not, something would normally take 100 days you get that bonus on it's going to take 50 so there is that so auto key that's the way to go let's do it okay for the, all the reasons said now again before we unpause we've got uh, this option here free civilian factories why well let's click on it they have completed what we asked them to do if you remember we asked them to uh, amongst other things build that additional road network so if we come over to our road infrastructure page you can see over here at Moorsland on the uh, left hand side here of Germany it is a 5 out of 5 now the entire state there turns blue and the reason it turns blue is it's just a really quick way for you to see okay that's maxed out in other words that's top level nowhere left for it to go it doesn't mean anything else just means 100 percent you can see most of the others are still 80. now i don't recommend working uh building up the entire road network at least not this day at uh, this early stage in germany it's more important that we get more civilian factories as you can see we've still got 38 available there's one almost finished so let's go ahead and build some more now you may say well hang on a minute you started off with 38 available you've built two Surely there should now be 40 available. And you're very observant if you notice that. The problem is, if you take a look at the top of the screen, we were previously gaining four factories from trade. We're now only gaining two. So, yes, we do own more. We did start the game with 34 factories. We've now got 36 in total. But we gain, or we're rather, we're still gaining an additional two from trade. And again, that's because there'll be some country somewhere else that is yeah it's probably after our steel okay so that's what there is there so what we're going to do come over to civilian factory and we're going to click somewhere else now remember what we were saying that it is quicker to build in a state that has a higher road network versus not and if we take a look at here Warsland is now the only state that we have that is a hundred percent so We've currently got four factories out of ten on Moorsland. If I select six factories to be built there, which is exactly what we're going to do, they're going to build far quicker than, say, building six factories uh, over here. 
There's a 60% road network. We could get this from 1 out of 8 to 7 out of 8 by putting 6 factories on. Same down here. There's actually 0 factories there. We could get that up to a level 6. It's uh, it's going to happen much quicker on here. So there are, again, multiple advantages for the road network. Now, you can click shit, uh, left click. We can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's our way to do it. And once again, we get this blue uh, indication that we've maxed out. The other way, if we right click to deselect all of that, is to just shift and left click, and that's going to take whatever state up to the maximum, which is, you know, clearly a click away, uh, a quicker way of doing the same thing. Now, this isn't always the way that you're going to want to roll, but in this early stage, yes. And so, what's going to happen is if you see here, Moorsland, there are six levels of factory to upgrade, it's going to build the first level. Then the second, then the third. You cannot, what you can't do is say, oh, well, I've got all these spare factories from elsewhere. Can't they all help as well? The answer is no. You're only ever going to get a maximum of 15 factories doing something in one particular uh, state at a time. So, um, so once this factory here at Rhineland completes, which you see is very close, there's going to be a shed load more factories come available, so we may as well get those working on something as well. And I see no reason why not continuing to finish off Rhineland. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift, click on Rhineland, bang, and now it's good to complete both of these states up to the maximum. Now, once a couple more factories have completed... And we've got 15 factories working on Moorsland. We've got 15 factories working on Ryland. At that moment in time, we're going to have a factory over and above that become available because we've built them. They've become available. So in other words, once up here, it says 40 out of 40. On top of that, we'll start and get extra factories available. And when that happens, we can start and have, if we click on, uh, say, Hessen here, we can start and have three separate states all under construction at the same time. And like I say, by the time we finish with this tutorial and the game really gets going, you're going to have so many levels all on the go at the same time because you've just got an industrial powerhouse that's to die for. <laughs> let's not get too excited. Right, let's uh, click away from that. And before we unpause, if we take a look over here, we've got some other side divisions. And again, if you don't, just let it roll around a day or two. You will see you've got the infantry division here. Now, if we take a look, do we have more than one? Press shift and click. No, we don't. We just got the one. We see this is a brand new division that's passed out from training. and It's ready to go at Leipzig. Take a look at the skill level. It's got the Corporal Chevron. So this is not a level three silver Chevron, uh, silver star like all the others. This is a level two, so it doesn't yet have those additional bonuses, which means we can train this guy up to level three. What I'm going to do is assign this division to a general. And I generally like to give general. <laughs> I generally like to give them an even number of divisions. Now, if you remember this guy up here, this General Max, he's got one division. And he had to hold this front line. And I just think one division's nowhere near good enough. So I'm going to give him this second division. He's a good general to be, you know, to have at least two. So again, with the, di the division selected, we've been over this on the first episode. We will right click onto General Max. He will now take this division, put it where he wants. But in addition to that, because he is training these divisions, he's also going to help get this division from level two up to level three like this one is and as you can see 25 percent modifier in combat good stuff all right let's press escape let's unpause slow time down just a tad there we go there you can see he's bringing the division up top if we zoom in coslin there it goes same as before moving over here Okay, new decision. So we've got this decision event or timeout. And so what this is saying is we've got 29 days left to basically cancel this. Back in the very, very early versions of this game, I'm going back years, you used to have to manually renew this commitment every single month. Thank goodness they patched that out because that was just a frustrating, annoying thing. And if you forgot to do it, you lost, <laughs> you lost the bonuses. Uh, so... Little random tidbit there. Thank goodness we don't need to worry about it anymore. 
Let's uh, quickly have a look over on the F3 menu. And look at this. Before we unpause. We've got Hartman on his wing. Look at this. He's managed to get him up to the Silver Star. So we're going to stop training this guy. Again, there's no gain to be had by continuing to train him. I realise there's a small trickle for the air veterancy, but we'll still get that same trickle if we set a new air wing train. So I'm going to stop him from training, and I'm going to fly Hartman to the very southern edge of Germany down here. And that's because when things kick off in Spain, this guy is going to be, you know, a little bit closer and ready to go there. So let's send him there. If we scroll down, we've also got these guys. Now, there are 96 out of 100, so they're still awaiting for aircraft to be produced. That's that's close enough. I'm just going to say stop training and also fly down to the southern edge of Germany. Now, once those four aircraft do get produced, the Stukas, they will, of course, resupply this air wing. And so you'll see the experience may drop down just a smidgen because, of course, you've got four You've got 96 pilots that know what they're doing and four that don't. But of course, the 96 are really going to help them along. So let's get those two aircraft there. And again, if I slow down time to like a level two, let's press space to unpause. And if I zoom in here, you can see the aircraft are indeed moving down to their new home. And there we see them. If we press escape and select over here. We've got the fighter as well as the Stuka. There you see now there came one of those aircraft. So there's now 97 as you can see. The skill dropped down a spidgin. Uh, so that is that. So let's make sure we're all on the same page then. At this moment in time, we're going to speed up until we get to the 10th of June. And at that point, we'll say adios. We'll save the game. So let's go full pace. Boom, pause, and for the next episode, we'll be able to carry on where we left off right now. So let's hit escape, save game, uh, Germany part six. <laughs> I'm getting lazier and lazier with the titles, aren't I? Let's save, and I will see you back here for part seven. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.